Hey everyone, welcome back to Zoya Reviews. Today I'm so excited to be talking to Claire Knight and Harry Cripps, the directors of the new Netflix animated film Back to the Outback. Today we're discussing topics such as Australia, meaningful messages, and much more. So let's get on into the interview. Today I'm with Harry and Claire. How are you guys? Doing very well, thank you. Awesome. So Back to the Outback is like a love letter to the beautiful country of Australia, which is where you guys are both from. So why did you feel it's just so important to tell the story and what was your overall purpose? I think sort of growing up in Australia, there was a grew up with a lot of those animals around, you know, obviously koalas and kangaroos, but also the dangerous and deadly animals, the spiders, the snakes and the, the lizards. And the purpose was to sort of show, to shine a spotlight on those animals, the ones who aren't perceived as cute and beautiful, but actually who are really lovely, often very gentle, kind, sweet animals. And the outback's most dangerous animals. These animals are deadly. You did horrible hiss. Oh, gross. So it was to it was to give them their moment and to show the world that these animals that some people think are scary are actually really lovely and fun and and important. And it's not often that some of these animals are seen, you know, like a thorny devil lizard is not that well known or mm. so by making these characters um we're hoping that people will research them and find out lots of interesting things that we've kind of put in there that and uh, you know all, you know a, a snakes all of these things are all about perception as well you think they're going to be deadly but you can't judge a book by its cover so all of our animals you think they're going to be one way even the koala you think is going to be cuddly but he's not necessarily uh, that way at the beginning of the movie anyway Yes, I love those messages and I think it's truly important to share across audiences and as you said, I think it's a great learning experience for everyone watching to learn about an animal that they haven't heard of before. So it's like a a win-win for everyone. Okay. And the storyline has a lot to do with nature obviously and the way we treat nature and interact with it as well. But the characters in the movie also have a lot of their own um lives going on obviously they're animals and they have feelings just as us humans and so how did you kind of counterbalance everything and kind of intertwine every character's own stories along with the whole theme of the movie in general well i think the theme is as claire said it's about not judging a book by its cover it's always about looking beyond the surface and seeing what a person has inside and these animals were great to choose as our heroes because they present we have a perception of them that they are dangerous and they are deadly and so we actually wanted to lean into that perception but at the same time we wanted to use a lot of their characteristics to show the human side of them and also these animals travel together they go on an adventure and they're looking for a home and so there's also a, a core message about where home is and who your family is mm -hmm. and it's often the people that you travel with um that are part of your family and your friends so it's a it's also a message about togetherness and you know really kind of everyone has something special and something that something special could save everything in the end finally i also love the music choices that you guys put into this amazing film like dolly parton's nine to five and billy eilish bad guy i love billy eilish so when i heard her song i was like yay <laughs> so i guess how was the process of selecting um the songs and was it hard to synchronize them no, not really. We we did um, at the ver our very, very first screening, which was all just storyboards, we had put uh, lots of different songs in. And as we evolved, we knew that that was kind of what we wanted to do, a little like Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, where you had songs that helped you to know what was going on next and connected. And then we wanted to use a lot of um, Australian artists. Stevie Irie is, is a great, uh, the first song that comes in, uh, we have a song there that she wrote for us. Um, and that, you know, we, we, we have music that I think helps to help you uh, go from one place to the next is and gives it a nice rhythm and uh, keeps you moving forward uh, on the journey. 
Yeah, and as a parent myself, watching animated movies with my kids, which I really love doing, but I love songs that I recognize as well. And Billie Eilish was there from that first screening. Yes, that, was that was always there. We kind of worked that whole scene around that song. I love that. I love talking to you guys and I love the film. I think this film is so unique, not only because of like the storyline, the characters and the animation, but because of the messages and how educational it is. There's so much and I can't wait to finish it, honestly. Thank you guys so much for talking with me. I really had a blast and I'm super excited. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video as much as I did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Check out Back to the Outback globally on Netflix on December 10th and I'll see you in the next one. You know what this means? You don't hate me anymore. I'm a Capricorn. I hate everybody. Baby, it's wildlife. And baby, I'm a wild child.